It's possible to demonstrate comb filtering in uh, any standard DAW workstation such as Logic, Pro Tools or Ableton. Um, and comb filtering occurs when we take two identical signals and mix them together, but one of those signals being subjected to a, a time delay. So they're, 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 there's a phase difference between the two signals. Now, this can occur in a audio from an, a number of scenarios. So, for instance, if we take a signal and route it either through a mixing desk or a DAW to an auxiliary channel, and if there is some kind of time delay on that auxiliary channel, then when we mix the two signals back together, then the output will have some kind of comb filtering in it. Um, this also occurs in acoustics. So if we record the same sound source with two microphones that are positioned at different distances, then there'll be some kind of time difference between the two signals. Um, and if we mix those together, there will be some form of comb filtering in the output. And this can also happen with a single microphone as well from reflection. So if you have a singer who's singing close to a wall, for example, then what we'll get is a very direct sound recorded into the microphone. But we'll also get some reflections that have taken a sort of a longer path to the microphone bouncing off the wall and into the mix and um and and if this is 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 just the right sort of time then then this can also cause comb filtering so it's important to have an understanding of how comb filtering occurs and to understand what it sounds like and so in, i'm just going to give an example of how we can hear some of these artifacts in logic uh just starting very simply so i'm just going to take a, a channel and get my mixer up and I'm just going to add a. Uh, I'm just going to add the test oscillator here. Switch that off for a second. So we're going to go with white noise. I'm just going to create a white noise audio source. Let's have a quick listen to that. Okay. And um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to going to send that to an auxiliary, like I mentioned. So I'm going to bus that out to bus one, and I'm going to send naught dB, so identical amount. To, to bus one and now when I play the noise we'll have two versions of it so uh, let me just set these to stereo just and I'll just turn it down a bit so now when I play the noise we've got the same we've got the same signal twice okay so to set up the the diagram I showed earlier um, I'm going to add a sample delay to uh to one of the channels so you where are we delay uh, sample delay so now i've got a sample delay on one of the channels so just to go back to my image i've now got one signal which is being bridged or or sent to an auxiliary channel with a time delay which i can set with the sample delay and we're mixing these back in in the in the master output so um, so let's <clears throat> hear this in action. What I'm also going to do is on the output, I'm going to bring up um, a, a, a good quality um, spectrum analyzer. So I'm using the Nugent visualizer and this allows me to see the different um, sort of frequency components of the output signal. So let's just play this without any sample delay at all. And here we can see a white noise signal um, coming on the output. <clears throat> so now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the same, but I'm going to gradually add, let's link these two, I'm going to add some one sample at a time, time delay to this output signal. And, uh, and then we can hear the difference as we add this delay and create this comb filtering. And you should be able to see as we increase the delay times, the comb shape filtering occurring in the frequency spectrum. So let's switch this on. So here we are, perfect white noise. I'm going to add one sample delay. And here we see this roll off has been caused by adding a single sample delay to so just to the auxiliary channel, we get one, we get a bit of a frequency roll off. Well, if I increase that to two, we see that it's not actually a frequency roll off, it's a null. It's creating a null frequency because of this time delay. If I increase this more, you'll hear how the time, how the sound changes 
every time. Okay, so what you can hopefully hear there is that as I increase the delay in samples, we get these nulls and we get more and more nulls coming to low and low frequencies. And what we see now is this, um, is this frequency spectrum which looks like it's got these comb-shaped nulls in them. And the reason I stopped at 11 samples is because we can work it out, but a little bit of maths, because this is running at 44.1 kilohertz. So 44.1 kilohertz means that, um, that there will be 22 samples in a 2 kilohertz signal. And our frequency nulls occur at 180 degrees phase cancellation, which is exactly half a single uh, a single signal's um, cycle. So 11 samples gives us exactly uh, frequency null at, at 2 kilohertz. So in the same way, if I multiply that by 4 to 44, we see the null comes down to 500 hertz. And so essentially we can, we can use this technique just to hear all the differences, <coughs> the difference between the sound of comb filtering at different time delays and it's quite significant on white noise. Now as this increases eventually you can hear that sweeping to a point where the comb kind of doesn't really exist anymore because we've got to a point where the <clears throat> The difference is so much that, uh, that it's, it's not causing those frequency nulls. But as we come back down, if I sweep this down, you'll hear the sweep. And that kind of sweeping sound is the sound of a phaser or a flanger. Um, effect which is which uses comb filtering uh, in a sort of a positive way to create a sweeping um, a frequency sweep in in the uh, in the signal but in reality when there's comb filtering it's actually usually static it doesn't change it but it is causing essentially a type of EQ that we have no control over so let's just test this a bit more by just dragging in a little bit of audio <clears throat> uh, I'll convert that file. So I've now got an audio file, um, and so instead of the uh, the sound source, I'm going to use an audio file, um, just an inst piece of instrumental music. Let's drop that in. Oh, there we go. So here we go. We've got some full frequency audio let's turn that up a bit now and I'll do the same thing I'll change the delays and you can hear the difference as as we add the delay original okay so that shows the effect of comb filtering I'm just going to stop that and bring back a, a lovely comb diagram uh, and let's switch this back on and just adjust the frequency so this is 
this is a, a perfect example of comb filtering. You can use an example like this to hear what comb filtering sounds like uh, if you've got a good quality spectrum analyzer. You need a, a spectrum analyzer plugin that has got high enough resolution to actually measure all these frequencies so it can show the comb shape. Um, but that's an example of comb filtering and it's something very much to be aware of and to not only understand how it occurs but to really understand what it sounds like as well.